Morning traders, welcome back. So green day for me today, thank God, because July has been the sloppiest month of the year is what it sure feels like. I'm green, but it's been one step forward and one step back all month long. It's just been a little bit stressful. Today, I only traded one ticker, that's BWV, which gave us some pretty nice opportunities, but then it just ended pretty early uh, after the market opened, and I just gave back profits after the market opened, so it was a little bit annoying. I think if I wanted to make more money today, I just would have needed to get a bit more aggressive pre-market, and we'll talk about that in a second. What I really want to focus on today, because I realize I have no video about this, is my TOS hotkeys, which allowed me to trade BWV, so I hope you guys to find some value in that let's go to the trading screen and what i'll do is i'll actually share my hotkeys first and then you guys can see how i went ahead and use the hotkeys in the actual trade so now let's go to the hotkeys and if you just go to this setup button right here and then you go to application settings you'll see that there's a hotkey right here you can go ahead and select and then you'll see all the hotkeys now i don't really use that many but i have a few that set it up where it feels like i'm playing a game or something so i really like the way my hotkeys are set up it makes my trading really really quick and easy for those tickers that run now sometimes i still don't get filled because tickers move so fast you have a limited ability at the same time with tos hotkeys but basically how i have my most used hotkeys set up is like if i'm playing a game i'm using a s d w and the buttons around that and that for me feels like a really natural setup now for you whatever you feel like is natural i feel like that would probably be the best way to go but for me having my hand like right on the keyboard like this where my thumb is on the alt and my other fingers are on a s d and that's an easy place to move around. So let's just start an order. So I have buy the bid. So that's like a pretty simple order. It's like if there's like maybe a little range or there's not that aggression I need to enter right away. I just do Alt A and boom, I have my limit order ready to go. Hopefully it gets triggered. Now, if it's a little bit more exciting out there and I really want to get an entry, I do Alt Q, which is just right above it. So I either Alt A or Alt Q, just move it a little bit higher, which is really nice. And then moving along here, I have basically the exact same for selling. So Alt S, sell the ask, which is like if there's not so much pressure or sell the bid, that's really what I want to slap the bid and get out. And if I move my middle finger down, I could turn off and on the confirmation window. I don't really use this one so much. I pretty much always have the confirmation window off, but sometimes when I trade higher price stocks, I'll actually turn it on just because oftentimes I'll trip over myself in the calculation because I'm usually trading $5 stock. So if I start trading a $50 stock, I forget that I need to size down basically a zero. I've had it in the past where I just went in with the same share size and all of a sudden I was trading, you know, 10X the share size that I usually do. That was kind of sketchy. Something I use a lot is cancel all, Alt D. I use this one so much, you guys have no idea. And let's just go to the actual trading screen or the setup that I use and you'll see everything again here. So this is cancel all. This this is all D. So I don't actually end up pressing any of these buttons ever. Sometimes I do, maybe like 5% of the time I do, um, but usually it's all hotkeys. Something else that is not on here is control Z. That is just something really standard where if I draw a line uh, and then I press control Z, it disappears. That's uh, something I use quite a lot because I'll use this tool as like a measuring device uh, quite often as well. Now, the one thing I don't do is sell or buy market. I've been thinking about it a lot. I might go ahead and add it, but I just don't really feel like it's so necessary. But if I did go ahead and add it, I would do probably Alt Z and Alt X and then move this one. It's something that occasionally I think about doing. And I do have the actual buttons right here if I want to do it, but I rarely ever do buy market or sell market. So I'm actually fine with not having a hotkey there. I feel like I might accidentally hit it and I don't like that risk. And then something I rarely use is flat position, but I have a hockey for it and I might use it a bit more going forward, but in the end, I feel like what's really important for my hotkeys is to keep it really simple. So the Alt A, Alt Q, Alt S, and Alt W, and then Alt D for cancel all are really, really important. And I really like this setup. Sometimes when I'm not even trading, my hands just automatically go in that position. It's just so ingrained in my head and I feel like it's really, really fluid. So I'm gonna stick with that. And uh, let's actually show you guys how I end up using this strategy to trade BWV. This is the ticker I traded today. It has high relative volume. I don't really see any new so that was a little bit of a red sign. I didn't go hunting for news. I don't really care that much. It's a biotech, 13 million shares outstanding and 43 million market cap. Again, if you want to see all my checklists, what I'm usually looking for pre-market, tradejournal.co forward slash start, and that's where you'll find my checklist. Now, the big zones to break was originally 330, and this is pre-market where I should have really stepped up my game. This is actually where I really stopped trading it, 
and then right around four dollars after the market opened we had a small little push to four dollars right before it flushed all the way back down and i gave back some some profits there near the end of this video i'll show you guys how much i actually made on this ticker now if we move over to my actual day trading screen right here this ticker popped up around 7 10 7 15 and i wasn't super interested in it right at first because it had really low volume but once it popped over 100 thousand shares being traded per minute that's when i got a little bit more interested and i just started taking some small steps it wasn't like a great continuation and i had low hopes for it because the volume still was like way below 200 below 300 hundred thousand shares being traded per minute and that's usually what I'm looking for so a lot of these trades were very very scalpy without the intent of continuation I think that's actually what kept me green today on BWV being a little bit more scalpy than usual um, eventually BWV did end up running here right around 330 and I made a nice little chunk of change here but I stopped trading it in this area which it was the real runner and this has had a lot of volume so I'm a little bit kicking myself in the butt about this one I should have traded it more aggressively here but basically after looking at this ticker for an hour and nothing gave way and there was no ever continuation if I would have chased in any of these moves I would have had a big loser I think that threw me off a little bit here in this area but that's fine I was up like 750 in this area or something like that so I was pretty happy how things were going and I didn't really regret this that much and then all of a sudden when this ticker started consolidating I just went away and I actually took a nap for like 45 minutes I came back before the market opened at like 9 15 I was watching in this area and I was really zeroed in on BWV I was ready to really trade this ticker and and that's exactly what I did. So five minute broke out here. I started trading this front side move. I was taking a lot of profits. I was being scalpy again, which was really working. And then the last trade here, I actually got a pretty okay entry, but the nine EMA gave, and I wasn't able to cut all my losses till somewhere in this area. So right here in this area, I gave back like 30% of my profits on the day, which is a lot more than I probably should have given back, which is a little bit annoying. But at the same time, as a front side momentum trader, you want to keep trading till you typically give back profits. Otherwise, you miss those potential moves. Just like in this area, I should have been trading this whole entire move until I started giving back profits, maybe around here, because that's when the front side proves it's no longer on the front side instead of me guessing when the front side's over. So I didn't do my best trading today, but hey, it's summer, so it's a little bit of an excusable situation because we just don't really see moves like this. And if I traded super aggressively, every single day I would have a lot of red days and that's pretty much what happened this month oh I bit myself I was getting too aggressive I was sizing up way too much I was adding into winners and that's how I had several max loss red days just being too aggressive I was basically trading like it was uh, q1 or q4 and not dead summer so let's quickly look at my stats today and you will see boom right there I made 643 that's exactly what you see in uh, TD Ameritrade right here 643 I only traded BWV today which is super nice just to trade one ticker that's usually when I will do my best and you can actually see here my average position cost was up a little bit over 5,000 usually it's a little bit below 5,000 uh, in the summer months so far and that's because I was really dialed in on one ticker and then I feel more comfortable sizing up my risk reward is pretty close to one to one which is nice I think that last trade right here on BWV is really where uh, I increased that unfortunately a little bit too much but luckily I didn't use massive size here because some of these trades I was using you know bigger size 12,000 here 15,000 there so yeah this was a decent loser uh, but at least it wasn't like over $10,000 position size so that was good and a profit margin of 64% almost is actually pretty good. My profit margin for this year is actually closer to 22%. So this is still a pretty good day, even though it feels like I kind of fumbled right at the end there. Um, but that's fine. If BWV popped up, you know, it would have been over a $1,000 profit day. And I think the risk was worth it. Then right here, you'll see the running PL for the day. So it was really consistent. I was up like 917 at one point just before I gave it back right here. I was down at like 599 and then I had a small winner. Um, but at the same time, I felt like if I kept on trading, I would just keep giving back profit. So at one point, I just went ahead and called it. And I think that was the right idea. Remember, if you guys want to check out my checklist, go to tradejournal.co forward slash start and you can see the slides and checklist right here. And this is what I look for pre-market for my stocks. And here are the challenges I have for you guys. If you want to get on call with me, check out these challenges and you'll learn how to do that. I'm still offering it for a limited time as long as trade journals in beta mode. And boom, just like that, today puts me back over $120,000 profit, which is really nice. But still, it's been a bit of a wash month and that is just not what I like to see. I'm ready to start cranking up the momentum again. It's only a matter of time. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you then first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.